Hi, everybody. Welcome to After Hours with Ed Brown. Today's guest comes to us from, started out in Florida. She's moved all the way up here to, to Oregon. Uh, please welcome Miss Diane Stocking. <laughs> niece. Niece. Stocking niece. <laughs> Diane Stocking niece. Should, should we it's take a tight, should we take a two? <laughs> a number two? Yeah. I wasn't take prepared two. for this. All, All right. right, try it again, Ed. All right. All right. Hi everybody, welcome to After Hours with Ed Brown. We What What the hell is going on? Hey, hey, hey is that you? You're interrupting my show. Get out of here. This is my I'm, show. I'm trying to do a show. I got these two beautiful ladies on here and I'm trying to do a show. <laughs> Tammy, I leave you alone for one minute with the program. Look, you bring in other guys. Are you looking for a new host? What's up with this? He's cute. <laughs> that, right? <laughs> Goodbye, Ed. Fine. Bye, Ed. Bye-bye. Bye, Ed. Welcome to After Hours. My name is Richter. I am your host. Richter! What? Leave him alone! This shit is real. Now we got Richter go, and we're going to have to hear it about it all night. Yeah. <laughs> that's a bunch of screaming memes out there, and that's the scoop that has been reported so far. Thanks for dropping me like a stud. I'm not interested in believing in something. Either it's real or it's not. By your opinion that you are no kill, you are dooming the species to be extinct. They are what they are. It doesn't matter what we call them. Let's remove ourselves from them a little bit. And I think that's something that the Bigfoot community can actually learn a little bit from. I actually am trying to push the envelope of science here. When are we going to make a video, Richter? And I mean not an X-rated one. Dr. Todd, you've also been called the scoff dick. <laughs> yeah, well, have these creatures stood against a backdrop of trees, I probably never would have seen them. You can't talk about I can. So you guys are going to bag a Bigfoot and get us a body. We're giving it uh, our best efforts. We thought that we had the holy grail of DNA. Our hero, Bob Gimlin's with us. Hello, is this thing on? Am I muted? Can you hear me? Hey, Richter, I've got a question for you. How does it feel to lose Bigfoot Bounty? Hmm. My question is, why do you think Bigfoot is real? Richter does put a lot of effort <laughs> into his costuming, doesn't he? Yeah, well, I mean, by effort, if you mean bending over and picking up whatever's on the floor. My. Well, in my opinion, After Hours with Richter is the number one Bigfoot webcast. Uh, what's your name again? Oh. Don't piss Richter off. <laughs> Richter, behave. So today's guest on After Hours with Richter is Diane Stocking Niece. Now, she originally came from Florida by the Everglades from Cutler Ridge. In 1974, there was a sighting by a man named John Smith who hit a skunk ape Bigfoot creature with his big car and that's what started Diane's fascination with the world of Bigfoot and since then Diane has researched Sasquatch heavily for the past 40 plus years. In 2007 Diane started her own nonprofit Stocking Hominid Research and since then she's combined her efforts with her husband Todd Neese into the American Primate Conservancy. Welcome to the show, Diane. Thank you very much, my dear. Thank you for wearing the shirt. That's right. I thought that was the right thing to do. I would have worn a shirt, too, had I received one. Ooh. Um, okay. <laughs> Oops. Um, yeah, well, you'll be getting one shortly in the mail, Tammy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, ladies, I've been wanting Diane on our program for quite some time because the field of Sasquatch has maybe like three or four truly relevant female Squatchers out there. Oh, please. please. It's the truth. And D Tammy and I both hold you in very high regard ever since we first met you two years ago. We found you to be very impressive with the knowledge. You believe it to be true. You want scientific data. You want the evidence. You are not falling into the woo category uh, beliefs. You raise the bar and you set the standard when it comes to doing the work. Thank you. And it's true. 
It's true. In my book, there's Kathy Strain, and then there's uh, Diane Stocking. And well, then there's, of course, and of course there's Mantra. So there's three out of the four. So who's the fourth? Ooh. <laughs> well, I would say Bobby Short. Um, living. Let's do living. Living. You want living? Yeah, living. Living's better because um, I don't have candles. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty then. Okay. <laughs> so we got, we got Mantra. We've got me. We've got Kathy. Yeah. So whoever the the fourth female in the world of Bigfoot, we'll leave that as a mystery. Okay. Wait, I have a candle. <laughs> a candle for Bobby Short. There. Bob, Bobby was a very good friend of mine, and we argued constantly all the time. We talked all the time. I miss her. I miss her arguing. There's several out there, you know. Yeah, there's four. <laughs> well, I mean, quite frankly, when this first started, it was... Me and Bobby, and me, and then me, Bobby, and Kathy, and then Mantra and Kathy, and Bobby and me. And then others came in. But I'm talking, you know, 25 years ago, there was very few women in there. Right. So, a lot of people have asked me things like, well, are you treated differently that you're a woman? I'm like, well, no, not with serious researchers where you treat each other equally, whether it, gender has nothing to do with it. And that's how I've always found it to be. But it is primarily a boy's game. Well, yeah. That's because mom's stuck at home with the kids. <laughs> they uh, got stuck going out in the woods quite a bit with me. <laughs> Since you've been in this field for quite some time, yeah. and people value your research methodology and input when it comes yeah. to Sasquatch, there's been a recent change in the past uh, 10 years where Bigfoot has gone from science-based to major hoaxing and into crazy religious woo with mm -hmm. Eric Beckyard primarily starting that yeah. and now it's evolved into personal friends of ours who have thousands of followers mm -hmm. that participate with the belief that Sasquatch can heal you and mind speak to you and transform into balls of energy, orbs, and then there's cloaking, interdimensional doorways, and portals. I wish I was making this up. I'm not. Even famous authors uh, talk about this. Tammy, I believe you went and saw David Pilates in person, and he asked the audience to open their minds, correct? Yes, and when questioned, got very defensive. Why because, is that? Why well, do these people get so defensive? I was defensive? one of the people that you know stood up and asked questions, and of course I was immediately pegged as a um, uh, non-believer. Uh, I don't know what. I guess I was pegged as a a rebel in the woo area. <laughs> but isn't that what Sasquatch is about? asking questions, searching for answers, not forcing made-up answers down our throats? I don't know. I mean, Diane, what's your take? A lot of people find that, you know, they they can't find Bigfoot on their own. They are getting um, discouraged. So they start thinking of other reasons why they're not seeing Bigfoot, and then they start seeing Bigfoot. You know, it's uh, why is that trail of footprints going off in the woods and then all of a sudden they disappear. I don't know. Maybe they climbed the tree next to them. I don't know. But it's usually they... Uh, I would say with the exception of one person I know, um, it's just another way to uh, validate to themselves that they're experiencing something. Don't they know how crazy it makes them look? They don't care. They really don't. They, they don't. have no shame. I know people that have no shame, but they also have a sense of humor. But most of the people that have no shame in this business have no sense of humor to go along with it. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, you, you they, they want to be somebody. So they are going to... You have a cat behind you, Pammy. Ah! Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they, they make things up. They, a lot of it is just they want to be somebody. And they don't realize... I mean, there's so many people out there nowadays. It, it boggles me. When I first started in this, 
there were so few. And now with the internet, and of course it's a good thing because we get leads that way or we learn more things that way faster. But still, you've got so many people out there now that's, oh my gosh, you're spouting now, off nonsense. As one of the top three female Bigfoot researchers out there in the United States, aren't you concerned? Doesn't this bring you a cause of worry? Well, of course it does. It, 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 it infuriates me at times, but there's also nothing I can do because people in the general public are going to follow what they want it to be. So you're not going to change their mind. You're not going to change the mind of a researcher. They are doing what they're doing for their own personal reasons. You're not going to change their mind. All you can do is go out there and do scientific forensic work and hope that it brings something out. You're not going to change anybody's mind. I notice that when it comes to media, they like, they seem to just fall over themselves over hoaxers like Rick Dyer. He oh, yeah. puts out stupid Bigfoot body Hank, which we can clearly see and tell it's not real. Breaking news to some of you, and it may be shocking, but turns out the Bigfoot that was supposed to be killed here in San Antonio actually was not. Rick Dyer, the man who claims to have killed him and, his, uh, and has been traveling around the country with the beast in a trailer as a sort of sideshow, now says the body is a fake. Yet he has the media's attention. They want that Kim Kardashian 30-second soundbite, boom. And that's where Bigfoot is. But you as, know, what's that? Rick Dyer started out back in, what, 2008 Eight. with his Bigfoot in the freezer, courtesy of Biscardi and his other partner, which I can't remember his name now. He kind of skadoodled out of the media frenzy. Uh, but yeah, Tom Biscardi and him were in on that. And unfortunately, for a short time, so was Steve Pulse. And then J.C. Johnson was a part of that as well. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, it was ridiculous, but you know, anybody could look at it and see that it was um, you know, a hoax. Right. But one thing Biscardi's good at, and that's uh, publicity, and he's a salesman, and he's good at it. So he was able to bring in the media, which made them look stupid after also. So you go out to Georgia and you see this thing in the woods. Now it's in this freezer, but you see this in, in the woods. Give us an idea of the dimensions. Well, the one that you're showing there right now was the one that's actually frozen in a, uh, in a freezer. It's a block of ice. I, the freezer had broken and Saturday had thawed out and they showed me the creature. You got a lot of hoaxers out there. And that's where the media is right now, and it's where it's been for the past eight years. But the thing is, if somebody were to get their hands on some of these videos by Dr. Johnson, who claims Bigfoot felt him up and healed his prostate, you know, then we're all going to be crazy. And then his hand started going up and down my left leg from my groin to my knee, and I felt this energy. And then I heard mine speak and said his leg is still okay. And if he creates this cult of Soa worshippers, people wanting to go and be healed at this magical place where they can mm -hmm. have conversations with Bigfoot, you know, it, I think it's going to be all over. I think we're all going to be labeled crazier than we already are. I mean, we can only do so much. I would love to go there. You think I'll ever get an invite? No, because everybody knows who I am, my reputation. I'm not going to go out there and sit there and go, I'm going to sit in my little circle and I'm not going to go out of this little ring, and I'm going to let them come to me. No, I'm going to be walking around all over there with a flashlight. Mm -hmm. But they, yeah, that, I will never be invited out there because they know I'll find something. They that don't brings want. up an interesting point, Diane. Yeah. You know, you, uh, you spoke of your, you know, you have a reputation. Um, you know, most of the investigations and everything that we read about on Facebook, on all of the blogs and everything, start out whenever a inter uh, witness is interviewed by, you know, credibility. This, you know, uh, uh, like you, they list the person's credentials to try yeah. and establish credibility and then go into the story, no matter how outlandish or ridiculous the story might sound to, yeah. you know, most people that, you know, are into scientific method. <laughs> Or, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, oh. So, um, can you? I, I always ask the standard question: Why do you think Bigfoot is real? But kind of going off in a different direction here. Define credibility 
for me in the Bigfoot realm. Are you talking about witnesses or researchers? All of the above. What oh. makes a credible researcher? What makes a credible witness? Researcher credible is uh, they're getting out there in the field. They're using a scientific method. They're um, collecting evidence through the uh, you know proper forensic method. Um, they're not ever caught in a lie. They you know research certain um, you know information to find out more. Uh, that that's credible. You you know somebody that's not going to uh, you know, do step backward on what they've told people that they are doing or that they, their opinion is that something is this, that, or the other. Um, I'm seeing that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The book is mentioned about reading books, doing your homework. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. You have to. Everything that we're doing right now is based on what's been done in the past. We go from there and we learn our, we learn what works and we learn what doesn't work. A good researcher is going to pro progressively move forward in how to collect evidence and how to do their research and and help others in the same sense that um, you know working together to try to uh, you know solve this anomaly this 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 whole mystery you've got credibility and witnesses that's harder to explain um, just because somebody's um, homeless doesn't mean they're not credible mm. you know well, that, that's a lot harder right there to 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 pin down. Credibility well, witness is just how they are acting when you're talking to them. Their their body language. If you recall, if you recall, ladies, uh, Dr. Johnson's initial original sighting by the uh, Grants Pass, Oregon caves, he was very credible because he was a doctor, a psychologist. You know, he um, presented himself in an uh, authoritative manner. No, he was uh, not credible. But people took. <laughs> who he was as a member of society, and yes. use that as a foundation for his story. Oh, yes. it's real. okay. And then we had uh, our mutual friend John Freitas went and was one of the first people to interview and right. go to that location and yes. found there was something heavy where Johnson was um, witnessing standing by the tree, and he yes. saw. You know, it, so it, the 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 A plus B plus C it all makes sense originally. Originally. Now it's shifted into something entirely different, and I think that ruins that witness's credibility because of what he's turned it into, the circus. It, it's not just that. It's, it's the way he reacted even back then, which when he had his sighting, he started contacting everybody he could. He would just went online. BFR was one. Bobby Short was another. His very first interview was at 8 o'clock the next morning with Bobby Short. I have the transcript of that interview. At that interview, he had no detail. Everything was out of his peripheral. It was a shadow that moved. Nothing, not, nothing that, that, that he can say, yes, it, I saw a Bigfoot. It was all shadow. And then all of a sudden it turned around. So, yeah, I was there when he, had, when he first saw it and had his first interview. He didn't see anything. He was scared. He's got a back history with his family of them seeing Bigfoot. I don't know. Is it something in his psyche that he always wanted to see one just like his family? Did that have what triggered all this? He saw a shadow. He was scared of the woods in the first place. He was by himself. And this turned into a Bigfoot sighting? I don't know. In the vast remote forests of southern Oregon, local psychologist Matthew Johnson had what's been called one of the most credible Bigfoot sightings of the last 20 years. Less than 70 miles from the most famous of all Bigfoot encounters at Bluff Creek, California, Johnson says he saw the creature on a remote trail at the Oregon Caves National Monument, a popular tourist destination. Eight years later, the Daily Courier and the DailyCourier.com took Johnson back to the exact spot where it all happened. This is the tree, right here. He described the animal he saw as an upright walking ape-like creature more than eight feet tall with long dark brown to black hair covering its body, weighing 700 to 900 pounds. He returned to the scene during the same time of year and same time of day to tell his story and possibly catch another glimpse of the creature that he says changed his life. Everything that I knew about the great outdoors came crashing down. 
but I know the man had no credibility as far as I was concerned and several others in the BFRO. So, I mean, yeah, within the public eye, he was a doctor. He had credibility. No, just because you're a doctor doesn't mean you've got credibility. But in the public eye, I understand what you're saying. Right. Sorry yeah, and going over. Well, and just because you can uh, have a blog, write a book, post on Facebook or websites or whatever, that in itself doesn't give you credibility. Anybody can have a book published, right? Exactly. So yeah. when you know, whenever you are studying the subject, you've got to keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, you're, there's a lot of storytelling out there as far as it, the study material that's available. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, uh, credibility is relative. Mm -hmm, exactly. So, yeah, there's people that think that uh, Eric Beckyard has a lot of credibility with the amount of uh, sensationalism woo he brought to the table. Yeah, and he did. He he harassed a lot of people. He he um, was not a good name for Bigfoot. I think if he was alive, he probably would not like me very well. No, he wouldn't <laughs> like you at all. <laughs> no, not at all. He would probably think I was a bitch. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. 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 I, I he 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 irritated and harassed a lot of people. He tried doing that with me, and the thing is, it's just I never responded to him. He'd send me all kind of emails and this and that, and I just never responded. He finally gave up on me, thank goodness. Uh, you know, some okay, people get mad and they'd respond, and then it'd be go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> I'm quoting myself here when I say, you can't explain an unknown with an unknown, and you can't explain magic with magic. You can't explain bullshit with bullshit. That's good. That's awesome. That That's awesome. But see, a lot of people are trying to do that, and it's ridiculous. And no. they're, they're so desperate to believe, and it's just, oh, God, you don't have to be it's desperate to believe. Word. That's the word, Richter, believe. I don't believe. I'm of the opinion that they exist based on data and evidence I've collected in my research. Believing is something, you. It, it's a faith-based thing. Yeah. So... I don't believe Bigfoot exists. I I know they exist based on the evidence I've collected and the I've witnessed testimony that I've collected over the years. I know I'm not. It's not the same as if I had seen one. People that have seen them know they exist for sure. But based on all my research, I am of the opinion that they exist. You know. If you were to have a sighting, I would think I'd know you well enough that you would question everything. What did I just see? Was that a bear? That couldn't have been a bear. Was you know you wouldn't just be like, oh, I saw a big fight. I saw a big fight. I think you would be in serious depression in analyzing what it was you exactly saw before you would come forward with with, with it. Well, you know that I mean? and the fact that knowing me, I'm the one that would run towards the Bigfoot. <laughs> Say, oh, whoa, wait a minute, come here. Mm -hmm. oh. I'd be the one running towards the Bigfoot, if nothing else, just to get closer and to get more examination of it. I'm crazy that way. So, yeah, if I ever saw one, I'd be going towards it, probably yelling at it and saying slow down or something. I don't know. Hey, Tammy, Bigfoot. Hey, what, Bigfoot. <laughs> Tammy, what would you do? I just want to pull some hair off of your arm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would want to go towards it. Oh, yeah, definitely. I want to chase it down. Mm -hmm. How else can I be sure of certain things? I mean, I, I, I need to be able to look at it to determine certain uh, certain aspects of its physiology. I'm not going to run away from it. I'm going to run towards it. Of course, it's going to be running faster than me, but, you know, I'm still going to go towards it. Diane, let's talk about what got you started with Bigfoot. John Smith, tell his story and why it uh, began your career as a serious Bigfooter. Um, he was driving to work. He was driving on Alligator Alley, which is a road, a two-lane road that goes between um, Miami and Naples, which is on the west coast of Florida. He was going to work. It's dark. It's a two-lane road, and something runs out in front of him, and he hits it. And he had he was driving either a Lincoln or a Cadillac. I don't remember now, but it was a big, huge car, boat, you know, metal. Um, he hit it. He went back to the fish camp, called the cops. 
Highway Patrol came out. Um, he went back and showed him where he hit it. His car showed evidence of something hit him hitting something. And so at the spot that he hit it, the uh, officer got out his flashlight, went down the ditch, started going into the woods, and this thing stood up in front of the officer. He immediately turned around, went back to the road, and called for backup. That turned into deputy sheriffs, highway patrol, helicopters, dogs, everything out there looking for this thing. And that was the incident that got me started, mainly because of all the police cooperation. These were police officers that saw something, and they were looking for something. And it was big, it was hairy, and it was running around on two feet. So that's what got me started in it. In Florida, we have Tim Fasano and Stacy Brown, and both of those gentlemen claim to have had footage. Stacy has a flare thermal of something. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you think... I have no idea. I mean, um, Stacy's original incident was not his, but his father's. So he's basically run out on his dad's coattails. His father's a really great guy. Okay? Stacy, he's out for the publicity. Tim Fasano, I don't even... No. He's... No. <laughs> he's... Sorry, he's worthless. He's a braggart. He loves the attention, and he's not a researcher. Well, I'm friends with Tim Fasano on Facebook, as well as Rick Dyer, and I used to be friends with Stacy Brown on Facebook, but, you know, had enough of that. Okay. <laughs> um, I find that they are fun and entertaining. No, so. but see, in my, in, in my field, it, 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 <laughs> that is nothing more than it, it, it gives certain members of the public the idea that what they're saying is real, and that irritates me. That irritates me. There is so much bullshit out there. Mm -hmm. that the general public grab onto whatever's out there, the whatever's thrown mm -hmm. to them. They don't know what's real and what's not real. They don't know what's scientific and what's not scientific. That's well, what irritates me. Okay. We aren't um, any kind of uh, you know, funding is the major issue with any kind of Bigfoot research. Right. That's why nothing's done, really, because everybody's got a day job. Mm -hmm. Nobody has the funding to put them out there in the woods 24-7 to be able to do something. Well, it's not helping when you got idiots like Pisano out there spouting off his nonsense. Yeah, you're not going to get funding like, say, Jane Goodall or no, you know, no. some organization like that no. researching you see animals. Or, yeah. Giving some money when you've got Fasano and Stacy Brown and a bunch of other idiots like that out there saying, "Oh, I've got footage. I can do Bigfoot." No. Well, it's and it's not just Bigfoot. There's you know any kind of cryptid is going to have that kind of environment. But we have, well, because yeah. Because they're, you know, because it's a, in a lot of ways, a belief system until it's proven. It's a belief system. Like, but, you know, yes, I believe in Bigfoot. No, it's, it's, but see, that's just it. Mm -hmm. who, who, depending on who you are, it's, it's not a belief system. It's a knowledge. Right. And the knowledge that they're there helps you to do your research and to continue on like I've done for all these years. What? Mm -hmm. I've never seen one, but I know they're there. So how about this for an idea? How about, so what? Just keep doing what you're doing. You know, people are out there. There's, there's enough real reach, researchers out there now doing what they're doing. You know, let, let the entertainers fill their niche, and the people that believe in that are basically the gullible public and the scientific crowd go out there and prove Bigfoot is real and just ignore the rest of that crap. Well, that's all we can do. Yeah. That's all we can do. <laughs> when it comes to these Bigfoot personalities like Tim Pisano, Rick Dyer, Michael Merchant, Bill Brock, even Rick Riolo, they are really entertainers. Rick Riolo. Oh, Riolo, okay. <laughs> yes, me. Yeah. 
Some of us are honest with who we are and what we're presenting. You don't yeah. see me trying to say that that's a real Bigfoot footprint or there's a Bigfoot in those Mayaka bushes and stuff. You know, yeah. it's it's not there as is, far as we know. <laughs> right? <laughs> up until this point. Up until this point. Yeah. I, I've chosen to be using the honest method of who I am and what I'm about. Uh, some people claim they're the serious researchers when we know they're not. But that's that's their shtick. And, you know, you know, God bless them. And, you know, some of us can be friends with them. Like Rick Dyer, even though he has harmed the Bigfoot online community with his conning and, and hoaxing and swindling and lying and blah, blah, blah. The online Bigfoot community is just as bad with their mudslinging and privacy invasion and attack methods. It's Recently, I have seen two prominent Bigfoot personalities and the amount of venom coming from to a man he's never had any problems with, he's never yeah. had, has not interfered with life or career, nothing. This just the the Facebook ven tenacity and venom and and it's it's poison and I it's shocking and it's it's that's what Bigfoot online's become and a lot of those personalities I'm not saying Rick is one of them but evidence points to yes he does enjoy that kind of engagement because it gets him attention uh, I don't enjoy that kind of engagement I don't like that kind of drama it's wrong I think it's mm -hmm. it's it's bad not just for the subject of Bigfoot but for everyone involved because people then become part of a lynch mob no, sorry to get on that tangent, ladies. Hold but, on. It's just... <laughs> Damn, <Nope>. he's looking. <laughs> that one was low. <laughs> right over your house. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay, you know, and, and just recently, without mentioning names, people, friends, personal friends, arguing on Facebook over Bigfoot. Doesn't matter who's right or wrong, you're still arguing on Facebook. It's like, why? I would never in a million years argue with you, Diane, on Facebook. I would call you. Or Thank or Tam or Tammy. I would be like, What Take the fuck? Off, I'd be like, What what are you saying? Bigfoot <laughs> talk to you in your sleep? Tammy. 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 Mm -hmm. And his yeah. hand went oh no, never mind. <laughs> Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go the there. big hairy hand. <laughs> no, but, but it just Don't go. I guess this kind of behavior permeates every single human um, click group uh, fascination. I mean, look at politics. It's human nature. It's human nature. It's always going to be there no matter what you're talking about. So To be hateful. Take, you know, try to, be, try to ignore it and move forward. Block and move on because mm -hmm. I don't have time for that. I have a nope. life outside of Facebook and Bigfoot and that's where my priorities are I have to take care of me and so I have completely cut off all that bullshit if I see any bullshit going down on my Facebook aimed at me they mm -hmm. gone <laughs> yep. that's simple I don't what? have to put up with it I don't even know half of these people I've never met them yeah I mean, I accept friend requests every day from people that are interested in, you know, hopefully what I do and what I have to say and, you know, the feelings mutual until that line is crossed. Yeah. Because I like people. I'm friendly. But when that line is crossed, you gone, sucker. <laughs> well, not I only that, Tammy. People, so I'm okay. Tammy, you got to protect your yes. family. And you've had people, you know, try to interfere with your family life, and that's wrong. Over Bigfoot. Yeah. Mm. What the hell? <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. Um, uh, these people I have on, lives on all these blogs. Too. I don't go on all these chat rooms. I don't go on any of them. I it's I don't have time for it for one thing, and for another thing, it's like really. I before Facebook because I pretty much came on the scene with Bigfoot when Facebook was start, first came out. But before Facebook, there was the BFRL website, the Blue Forums, and that's where you would find Richter occasionally making a comment about Bigfoot sightings, Bigfoot reports, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I wasn't a part of the Bigfoot forums 
uh, the bigger one. Nonetheless, I was there at the BFRO stuff, and I realized back then, early, early on, that even if I just ask a question, I was pretty much publicly shamed by moderators and, and people that are of that belief train, the Wu train or whatever. Yeah. All I did was all I was just pose a question. And back then, I should have realized early on, keep your damn mouth shut. Don't ask questions because you're going to be a target by people that think they are the knowers. But that's not the way to be. Ask questions. Don't worry about what other people think or say. I mean, that's me. I, do, I, I can right. give a crap. Well, and it's good to ask questions, but not just be, you know, made out to be a target. It's just, And that was before Facebook. You yes. know, and then, and then I joined Bigfoot Forums, and then my artwork was deemed inappropriate when I was drawing Finding Bigfoot, uh, parody cartoons, and then I went on to Facebook, and then the rest is history. <laughs> yes. Who that? <laughs> I got a kiss. So where's weird. mine? Hey Todd, where's my kiss? Come here, big boy. No, it's all mine. You can't have any. But the thing is, you got to stay away from that nonsense. It's not going to get. I mean, you really do have a lot of knowledge, Richter. And you know I don't bullshit. Um, you do have a lot of knowledge about who's out there, what they're doing, which is nice because if I need to know something, I can call you. You know, I I have three quarters of the people are out there. I don't even know them. I don't. I know this is bad. I don't care to know them. I have. I know who does real serious research. I want to do research with them, and that's who I'm going to be with. That's where um, Tammy and I are now with our Bigfoot uh, careers, wouldn't you say, Tammy? Yeah, I wouldn't call it a career either. I would. What would you call it? it? <laughs> an an uh, avid interest. Okay. <laughs> an avid interest. Yes, okay. career is something that um, we get paid gives for. back financially. Yeah. That shit ain't happening in Bigfoot. <laughs> well, it did. You make your Bigfoot pendants. You do make money. Oh, yes, well, and I'm you, quite wealthy from that. You do. Oh, it has paid for some trips to Beachfoot. It's done very no, well. It's never paid for an entire trip. Not but one trip, of. but it's helped offset some of the costs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a lot more than mm -hmm. what other people are getting and want. Yes, because I need beer money. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. You have to make sure you have your beer money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so back to the original thing, John Smith, uh, that sighting is what got you interested, the police officers seeing the creatures stand up. And mm -hmm. it's been 40 years. You've met quite a few people along the way, some people who are no longer here, like Bobby Short. Yeah. Um, who else have you met that are no longer here? I used to write back and forth and call Renee to Hinden. Um, I wrote Grover four or five times. He wrote back. And this was back when he actually wrote letters and mailed them. U.S. Postal Service, you know. Um, wow. I've, I've never met John Green yet, but Peter Byrne is a close friend of mine. So three out of four to the four horsemen. That's not bad. Hang on, I want to show you something. Oh, he's digging. I'm digging. I got it right here. I am prepared. Back when I was seven years old, this book really piqued my interest and jump-started my reading. Uh, the Boy Who Saw Bigfoot. Small. It's really nice. a nice read about a young boy who's got trouble in his life, and he sees a Sasquatch. Okay. Great book. Okay, and then like, oh, well, what else is out there? You know what I mean? So that as my reading skills improved, then in um, middle school, Renee's book, Sasquatch, yeah. this paperback came out, and this was the Bigfoot game changer for me. This was the book. I read it back and forth probably 50 times. This, okay. was, this is it, and if I were to ever give someone a Bigfoot gift, it would be this book. Okay. You know, did you ever okay. read it? I have not read that one. My first book I ever bought was Peter Burns book. And my second book I ever bought was The Ann Slate and Al Berry's book. It does not seem like we're getting those kind of books anymore. There are very few very few 
far and in between. Did I say that right, Tammy? Few and gone. far. Few and far between. Uh, yeah, you know, we that, have, go. um, gosh, this giant Bill Munn's book, it's massive. I mean, yeah. if only this book came out when I was a kid. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know, there's, it's, it, the it, knowledge it, is there, people. Yes, it's not it, on Facebook groups. It's people not, would read books. Right. <laughs> read books. The right books. Not... Oh, I can't say it. <laughs> you can, and I can um, edit it out. I'm looking for one of those bad books. Oh, no, uh, here we go. Here we go. Here what we go. is it? Hang on. Who is it? Where is it? <laughs> or, or perhaps books on things like evolution and uh, anatomy. Anthropology. Anatomy. Yes, right. Exactly. Yeah. Primate anatomy. Yes. Okay. Because you've got people out there that you know believe that. What are you showing? Go ahead. Let me see it. My life with the hairy people by Arla Williams. Okay, you can put that away. Look, it's a young Diane. No. With a skunk it's cape. Not. Hello, Mr. Bigfoot. She does what? have bangs. <laughs> it's a young Diane. No, that's not me. You can put that and book I'm, away. And on page yeah. 75, when Diane <clears throat> first saw the skunk, she said, Hello, hairy person. Can I be your friend? And she heard in her mind, You must purge all the sin from your life, young Diane. I'm kidding. That's not in the book. <laughs> I read that part. <laughs> I would just... not waste my t I'm sorry. I would not waste my time. <laughs> but, you know, there's an audience for it. Uh -huh. Yeah. There is an audience for it, yeah. When Autumn came out with her book, Enoch, it reminded me a lot of the story, reminded me a lot of this guy that I interviewed back in Florida. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Enoch. His name was Mike. And Mike lived out in the middle of nowhere because, well, he was basically destitute. He was homeless. He lived out in the Everglades. And somewhere I had tapes. I don't even know if I still have them anymore. Um, but his story sounds a lot like her book. He knew that they ate raccoons and frogs and snails and this and that. And Let's like talk that. about this book, Enoch. Um, I, Autumn was played by this guy that was sending her emails and whatnot? I don't know. I don't know. It could be. It might not be. I don't know if the guy's still alive. This was, you know, I talked to him and interviewed him back in the 90s. So, I don't even know if he's still alive. I get quite a few emails from people on a monthly basis because of my webcasts and video content that I put out on the internet on YouTube from okay. people that want to share their Bigfoot stories and their Bigfoot sightings. And I, I'm not rude. I just respond with, well, that sounds really cool. Have you talked to other people in your area? Very basic, general, vague kind of almost like a brush off, you know, and that's as far as I go because I don't want to fall victim like maybe perhaps Autumn did in believing this guy's story and then writing a book about it only to fall on my face because it turned out not to be a true and it turned out to be a hoax and et cetera, what, what, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I don't want I don't want that. I don't have time for that. Yeah. And there's a lot of that out there and I've seen quite a few people appear on the internet now with YouTube channels kind of doing like what we're doing and professing their sighting as it's real. Of course, there's no evidence. Right. You know, and there's the blurry yeah. photo. It's just this is the same story being told over and over right. again. It's just up to us how we react to it. Right. Right. And it all depends on, I mean, it does depend on the witness. There are, to my, my opinion, which doesn't count for much, um, there is not a whole lot of real sightings. A lot of it is people going out in the woods and they hear something and they attribute it to Bigfoot. And so they call somebody and say, I saw Bigfoot or I heard Bigfoot. And, and, and that doesn't hold any, any water. I heard a twig snap and it sounded big. Yeah. I'm like, okay, there are bear and elk out here. You know, there's mm -hmm. bear in Florida. You know, I, it, it, it's... 
you don't want to hurt their feelings, but you also know that people that are out there in the woods and they really want to see Bigfoot, they're going to attribute things to Bigfoot. Right, and pareidolia, yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. I know this man by the name of Todd Neese, yeah. and I will never forget his quote, and it has stuck on me for the past two years. When it comes to Bigfoot, there is an ounce of truth with a gallon of bullshit. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. And yes, that is 110% true. Yeah. Mighty nice guy, too, Todd Neese. He's a nice guy. I like yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. good-looking, nice good haircut. Looking. Yeah, nice. I like the haircut, too. I yeah. like the haircut, yeah. Probably why I married him, you know? The haircut? The haircut, yeah. Hmm. That <laughs> says a uniform. lot about a man. You know? Maybe the yeah. uniform. I don't know. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Diane, <laughs> it has come to my attention that you are not quite the cheerleader for the BFRO that you once were. Can you tell <gasps> us what happened? Hey, my little Squatch Monsters, it's time to shake up the Bigfoot community. This is Off the Richter. I hate to bring it up, but there does seem to be a connection to UFOs. Bigfoot's invisible. Yet they're invisible. Did he just say Bigfoot's invisible? Yet they're invisible. No one's going to take you seriously. We know for a fact that squirrels can't cloak. Oh God, here we go. Make sure your chairs are raised and tray tables locked in the upright position. If Roger Patterson were alive, he would be kicking your ass. Put down the bong and prove me wrong. God, why am I always having to tell this to you Bigfooters? You want your Bigfoot video to be seen? Now's your chance. <laughs> How can you look for Bigfoot with all this marijuana smoke? Ugh. Hey, I'm Richter. I'm Bigfoot OG. 